Hey guys, CB Super. Um, made a fog tool. Uh, it's pretty easy to use. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into Fusion and I'll show you how to use it. Like all my other tools, it's a macro. And all you have to do is import the macro into your macro folder. There should be some information in the, uh, in the description of this video that shows you how to do that. All right, so once you get the macro all loaded up, all you have to do is shift space, type in CBF or CB fog and it drops it in. If we take a look over here on the right hand side of the screen, we'll notice that there's not a whole lot of uh, settings. And like most of my uh, tools, when you bring it in and you merge it in onto something, it's pretty much set up for um, just to be ready to go. Uh, the only difference is there's no movement added to it. So the, the fog is completely static at this time. Uh, and, and if I'm to play it, you'll notice that there's no seethe rate, there's no nothing. Um, um, obviously this is built on a uh, on some kind of fast noise. If you wanna change just the actual look of the fog, you, know, you can start coming over here and playing with some of the dials. You can of course turn the amount of fog up. You can, uh, you can change the fog seethe or the look of it. So you change the pattern behind it. So of course, um, there's also this haze slider, and you can uh, you can you can turn the haze slider up to see what it's doing. It's just adding more haze. So it's just like atmospheric distortion. All you're really doing is you're just adding a little bit more uh, particles in the air. There's also um, masks that are built in with uh, a lot of soft edge on it. So if you want to drop the haze down from the top, you can. Um, maybe you don't want it to go all the way up. You know, you just want a little bit of haze from, uh, you know, from on the ground floor. You can do that pretty easily. Uh, same with the fog. There's also a uh, fog drop here if the fog is too intense. If the fog is too intense uh, on the top, you can go ahead and drop it down. You'll notice it, it's pretty hard to see. The fog is actually, um, the way that it's built, the fog is heavier on the bottom than it is on the top. So in order to really see it, you may want to drop the haze all the way down and then uh, you can kind of drop it down like this and you can see up or down. Um, but the fog is actually what moves. The haze does not move. The haze is static. Uh, the haze is just like an added effect. Uh, of course, you can color it if you want to color it. Say you want to add a slight blue tint to it, you can. Maybe you want some green poison gas, you can do that. Um, Maybe you want to make like a cyber look to it. You, you can pretty easily. You know, one of the main reasons I made this tool was because I wanted to animate the ability to make the, the fog move left or right or up or down. Because you could also use this not just for fog, but you can also use it for like a wind effect. So if, um, if there's a slider here that says wind left, right. So if you go to, if you move the slider to the left, it's moving the wind to the left. If you move the slider to the right, it's moving to the right. Same with up and same with down. So the way that that works is that um, if I move it to the left and I press play, you're going to see now you have smoke or fog moving to the left. Uh, likewise, if you move it in a positive direction, it's going to be moving to the right. So the farther it moves, the faster it's actually going to move over time. Now this isn't playing at uh, 24 frames per second, it's at like 6 or 7 frames per second. So um, when we jump back over and we actually render this out, it'll play a lot quicker. And of course, back to zero makes it so it's static and it's not moving at all. Same with uh, up or down. If I go to the left, it's gonna it's gonna flow down. If I uh, to the right, it's gonna flow up. So of course, you could use this for some kind of um, smoke. Maybe you turn it to like a black smoke pretty easily. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things you can do with this tool. Uh, you could also you can come in here, and there is an input for a mask. So if you wanted to come in here, you could throw some text. And now you have some uh, animating text if you want it. So, I mean, that's pretty easy to do, right? Um, if you want to make things so they're a little bit more volumetric, uh, you could do one of these numbers where you just create a polygon. Um, you can't create it out of the actual ellipse. You need to create polygons out of the, um, out of like, a, you know, like a spline tool or use the spline and then edit the controls to make it into a, uh, a rectangle and uh, I actually show how to do that in another video it'll be up in the right hand screen and then that way you can actually um, you can bring these uh, you can bring the inner rectangle in and then this outer rectangle is going to be your fall off 
Um, so I thought that's kind of neat because, uh, I mean, if say you were trying to make some fall off into a room, say, uh, and usually you want to set up your inner square first because the it'll move and adjust the uh, the outer square. But then you take these outer tangent handles and this is going to be your fall off. Oop. Apparently I have two of them there. And so uh, pretty much you just do it like this. And now what you're doing is you're creating like a room. So there will be more fog here in the center, less here on the outsides. Uh, and then of course you can also come in here and if that edge is too much, you can also just drop it down now so it blends a little bit better. Um, that's just how you make like, you know, vol volume, uh, that's how you make a volume anything pretty much is just, uh, you know, that way. And then you can add your fog in. Now we have like multiple fogs. So we have fog on the outside, fog on the inside. There's two fogs running. Uh, and, and you see it's pretty easy to do. Um, there's another thing that you can do as well. And so I went ahead and I took that macro tool and I just tossed it into my templates folder. And you can really easily now just come into your effects library and you can scroll down to CV fog and you can bring it out as a template. Now the cool thing about this is that you can, you know, lengthen it to whatever your clip size is. And now you've got fog already ready to go and you can still control everything from the edit tab. So maybe I want more fog and maybe I want uh, it to move left, right. And maybe uh, I want this color just to be a little bit blue. You can actually edit all of that right here and, uh, and not even go into the Fusion tab, which is kind of neat. Um, I personally always go into the Fusion tab anyways, just because uh, there's more things that you can do. Like if I wanted to use this color picker, the color picker doesn't work from the, uh, the edit tab. You actually have to go into the Fusion tab and then the color picker works. Um, other than that, I'm pretty sure everything else works from here. The only thing um, is if I wanted to like do that thing where I did it with the text, I would have to build that into this tool, which you could. I mean, you could easily do that. In fact, let's just go ahead and jump in and see how we can do that. Well, I want to keep this text, right? And I want to pretty much keep the CB fog. So all I would have to do is command click these, come over, maybe create a new macro and we'll call this fog text. And then uh, let's come down here and let's see with text. Let's just say uh, that's all I wanted to keep. But instead of saving it there, let's go over here to, um, and this is uh, like a little tip here. If you think you're gonna be using macros all the time, and if you're on a Mac, I'm pretty sure you could probably do this on a PC too. Uh, just throw those folders up here on you know, your, uh, your sidebar. That way it makes it a lot easier to just you know come in here and now you can just go into your Fusion tab, templates, edit, titles, save, um, you will have to exit out for some reason when you save macros, it doesn't require it. But when you save into templates, um, you have to go all the way out. Now I know that you can make, um, dummy templates and stick them in there, uh, or test templates and stick them in there. And then you can actually just go in there and you can change the templates. Uh, I haven't tried it, but that should work as well. Okay. And then now if we were to jump over here and we see that there is a fog text, we can bring this fog text over. Uh, right now it just says text. Maybe we want this to say CB super. That's, that's really big. It will just say, <laughs> uh, all right. So we definitely should have put more functionality. Um, maybe the ability to change the actual size on this. Uh, but on yours, on your macro, you guys can do that if you want. I'm actually going to delete this macro since I'm done. So, uh, but there you go. Like um, now you have like a foggy text uh, template macro that you created. Um, personally, I don't, I don't really see a need for that, but um, I do think it is kind of cool to be able to actually just drag and drop this fusion uh, effect on from the templates. All right. So really quickly, um, let's just go over kind of how I made it in case you want to make some fog and you want to change things up in maybe your own tool. Uh, let me go ahead and show you uh, just the uh, the flow for this. And I'm just going to get rid of this grid real quick. All right, so let's go ahead and kind of zoom in here. And as you can probably imagine, 
everything is based off of uh, a fast noise. So what I did is I made a fast noise, and then if you kind of look over here on the noise parameters, you'll see that uh, the details actually turned down quite a bit because I didn't want, I didn't feel like it needed so much granular noise, um, it, but it, you really just need to be able to see the movement. And in order to see the movement, you kind of have to have a little bit of detail, but the lower the detail is, the faster it's actually going to run. So um, contrast is turned down for the most part and uh, brightness is turned up just a little bit. Now the scale is actually left almost entirely alone. You could come in there and you could play with the scale if you feel like for whatever reason the pattern isn't to your liking. And then uh, inside here of course it's just a gradient with a radial. So if we kind of look at it what it is is the, the radial gradient is set down low so that uh, there's more of the condensed uh, fog or smoke in the bottom and then there's uh, it, as you can see I mean if you want it for whatever spread out even further you can do that um, and that will give you more fog all over the screen I just figured that fog would probably be a little bit more condensed the lower it is um, and so that is why it's set up that way all right and then in this rectangle this is our it's actually set up on a modifier so that I can drop it like this. And all that's gonna do is that is going to, um, you know, kind of make a nice soft edge so that there's no fog up on the top. I call it the fog drop, but really all it is, it's just a mask that, you know, kind of drops down so that uh, you can see uh, more of the screen as if the fog was lower into the ground. If you wanted to further tailor that, you could. All right, and um, so by default, it's pretty much showing everything. That, there's a little bit of soft edge that creeps in here, which is why I have it go up even further. Uh, but you can see all it is is it's just a big rectangle. Likewise, if you keep uh, scrolling up, you'll actually have fog from the bottom start to fall off. So if for whatever reason there was something you need to mask out, you could do it that way. But honestly, um, I retained the mask input, and the way that I retained the mask input was right here. Um, because if because I have two different instances, this all I did is I needed a color node that was separate, so that you can control the color, and it's instancing into both of these. These are just instance backgrounds of this uh, original color, and all this is, is this is a background. This is a color. I call it color, but it's just a background, and that way you can kind of color the background to whatever you want uh, by changing this one color, and it's also going to change the haze side. So if you look over here, this is the haze pipeline. All it is is it's a background that is, uh, you know, plugged into another background and one background is masking the other background. All you're doing is this haze blend is just a merge tool, which is uh, blending up or down. Um, and then I'm just clamping the value so that it doesn't go past 0.5. So you'll notice on your addition, uh, you could go all the way up to one and that would just be completely opaque, but then you wouldn't be able to see anything, so it wouldn't make much sense. So the haze is simply just a background and, you know, like you turn up the blend of that background. It's super simple stuff. Same with the fog noise. This is just a blend or it's just a merge that uh, you're blending in. So, I mean, you could even come up here to like two and you could over blend it. You know, you could, you could dial it back down, but you're going to get like some super whites and stuff. I use these backgrounds as fillers just to uh, plug into to have a uh, and th they're just set to uh, no alpha so basically they just so I can use the merge node as a blend and then uh, that's pretty much it um, super simple um, the only thing is that on these fast noises what I did was on the uh, in order to get this thing to move, and I know I've showed this in other videos, I think I have anyways. Um, in the center here, I just add a modifier uh, expression, and then I, I built these little uh, dials to where if you come over here, there's an expression. It's just uh, time times n1 divided by 20, which the divided by 20 just makes it so the increments are actually smaller. And all that says is while you, when you're moving it to the left, it, the, whatever this number is, this is N1, so whatever that number is, it's going to uh, times that by time. So as the time is moving, it's going to animate your, your, your wind or your fog to the left, right, up or down, or however you have it set up. So, and then I just, you know, brought that all into a macro and that's pretty much the fog tool in a nutshell. I uh, hope you guys are able to use, uh, put this tool to some use. 
you have any questions, please uh, leave them down in the comments. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.